started. So obviously today we're going to talk about investing in commercial real estate like a pro, Mr. Sharif Medawar. And, you know, we'll go over some announcements that Alexa, you want to talk about some of the events that we have coming up? Absolutely. Welcome, everybody. Um, very special welcome to everyone who's new here. But if you are not, thank you for coming back. Welcome to our March monthly meeting um, with Sharif. So I'll just give you guys a couple heads up. Um, we have some great events coming up this month of March. Um, we almost have a theme of finance. Oops, let me go back. Sorry. Backspace. Backspace. Oh, gosh. Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties. Um, all right. So we have almost a theme this month of March finance. So look out for all of those events that are coming up. Um, we actually have a workshop tomorrow. So if you're available tomorrow, come on in. And then we can all look forward to our in-person meeting April 6th. We are almost a month out. So let's mark your calendars. I'd love to see you on April 6th. Um, let's connect, let's network. I will have a lot of great vendors for you guys to meet and um, get contact information from face-to-face. -face. Like, this is awesome. So Absolutely. And if you guys notice, all these things are um, free. So I don't want to hear that it costs too much money. And again, you know, we're committed on as many online events. Um, it doesn't cost me anything. So I want to pass on the same thing too. So that will be one of the things that will make a big difference for you. Um, again, just like Alexa said, our in-person meeting is April 6th and it will be at the Signature Grant. Absolutely. So as you guys know, you can find all of our events on our website, bpmria.com um, at the upcoming events tab at the very top. So go ahead and register for these free webinars and also register for your ticket for the monthly meeting. Um, members will get in free for that meeting and um, you can get all of the updates via text. Go ahead and text the word BPM RIA to 954-800-6961 um, to get text updates on all of our events. No, we're not spamming you. We are going to just give you a heads up of when our events are. So our next Quick Start Boot Camp will be May 7th and 8th. This is on Zoom. It is all day Saturday and Sunday, and you will learn all of these wonderful things. You can get more information about the Quick Start on um, bpmquickstart.com. Of course, a membership has many, many benefits, including getting into the in-person events for free. Um, so go ahead and get a membership if you don't already have one so that you can get the entire National RIA package and many more um, special offers. And if you are a business owner and you'd like more um, recognition to get on our website, go ahead and get yourself a corporate membership. And if you're not sure, give me a call and we can definitely talk about it. <laughs> so we do have one-on-one -on -one coaching programs available. Um, you can reach out to me anytime if you have any questions. You can also dis uh, book a, dis a discovery call on bpmria.com. So don't hesitate if you are interested in coaching or interested in succeeding in real estate and you just have not gotten there yet, go ahead and book a discovery call, bpmria.com, and we'll at least open the door and get the conversation going for you. We always want to thank our sponsors. We're a happy partner of the National RIA, where we get so many amazing benefits including Office Depot, Home Depot, Office Max, Arcana Insurance, and the list just goes on. So don't hesitate to reach out to the office. I'll go ahead and put all my contact information in the chat for you guys, but I do want to give some housekeeping rules. Um, we'll be, you know, putting all of those questions into the Q&A section. So don't put your questions in the chat. I'll be putting helpful links Ashley will be putting information for you guys in the chat section. So go ahead and put all those questions in the Q&A section. And without further ado, I will go ahead and give the floor over to Ashley and Sharif. Um, we just want to thank you guys so much for being here today. And we're just really happy to have you guys back after some time. Oh, oh thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> really a pleasure to be here. Sharif Medawar is the name, and uh, real estate is the game, right? Uh, 
So yeah. uh, as you guys, I know many of you have been to the Brea meetings. I've been to Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and I've been with Anish a long time. And uh, I'm really happy to be here virtually. And of course, my uh, vice president, Ashley Jones, been with me since 2003. So, uh, so here we are. And um, let me see uh, if I can do screen share. And we get right into it. Give me a second here. So we can go right here. I have quite a few exciting things to share with you. So watch, listen, and learn. And of course, you can ask as many questions as you like. At the end, I am not an attorney. A little disclaimer here. I'm not a CPA, but I have in-house attorneys and in-house CPAs work exclusively full-time with me because of uh, all the activities we do. I'm also a real estate fund manager. I manage other people's money. I actually have been training people on how to set up their own real estate funds since 2007. Um, just a side note here, real estate funds where you can actually pool investors' money, like get investors to give you the money, and then you can go into projects and to deal residential or commercial. That business exploded in 2015, 16, 17, due to the Jobs Act that was created by Obama. And uh, sadly, he doesn't get enough credit for it. I think that's one of the biggest things he has done in the country. So, um, so I've been a fund manager um, since the late uh, 2000s. So it's been over 12 years where I managed people's money successfully, thank God. And we've been through many different cycles. We'll talk more about that later. I've loved uh, always sharing the knowledge. So I'm an educator by nature. I love to teach. It's funny, even selling is teaching. Uh, convincing uh, somebody to give me the house or me doing partnership in something is me educating them why we should do it in a certain way. So you have to have the ability to, to teach people to explain yourself calmly, clearly, and patiently. Um, and that works for your personal life as well. I'm also an author. I wrote a couple of books. By the way, these are my website here, um, just the, the real estate fund, mixif.com, Medawar International Group, Secured Income Fund, uh, securedfund.com, um, uh, you can check it out. And we have uh, the best asset protection in the, in the country, actually, which is kmagb.com, kissmyassetsgoodbye.com. <laughs> Sorry, it's just the name we chose and people don't forget it. But... Uh, uh, I'm an author, so I wrote this book, Blue Ocean Opportunities in Commercial Real Estate. Uh, blue Ocean is a term, uh, unlike bloody ocean, where a lot of competition, people kill each other to, to, to make money and they compete on price, etc. Blue Ocean is where you actually go where nobody has been. Like we do certain strategies, like in uh, single tenant buildings, we do certain strategies with apartment buildings that are really with a lot less competition. We do... 12 different types of commercial properties with a very unique formula called the FACT system, how to find the properties, because everybody wanna find a good deal. How to analyze the numbers, because if you don't understand the numbers, how are you gonna make money? Uh, wealth is a skill based on numbers. Number three, how to control the property. You have to have the proper paperwork so you can control it. And then how to time the process of due diligence and uh, closing and the S for the facts system, the S is to strategize, to take the property to its highest and best use, whether it's residential or commercial. And that book here, it's really, uh, I talk a lot about how I started in the business, how I grew, and it's a bestseller. You can go on Amazon. We, we give it for less than $3. It's really um, more than just, just me giving back and sharing with people. And if you like it, please put a little uh, a note there on Amazon. We've been... Uh, a bestseller for a while on it. And we've been actually um, on uh, Forbes. Uh, as a matter of fact, with Forbes, um, I had written one time a, um, a blog, believe it or not, about the 12 steps to success, how to make it in the country, in the United States, whether you're an immigrant, somebody starting, you don't have money, whatever complaint you have, you know, everybody has a complaint of some sort, <laughs> but hey, life is not what I expected it to be. And uh, I explained in 12 steps how to make it. And I got a call from uh, Steve Forbes office. They said, listen, we're doing a book called Successonomics. Would you like to co-author it? He loves what you have, elaborate on it. And uh, we went to New York and uh, actually I did a presentation even at the Marriott Marquis and that's a book. So, you know, authored a couple of books. Here is Anish and me. This, we were actually in 
Puerto Rico, in Old San Juan, Puerto Rico, the U.S. territory of Puerto Rico. As uh, some of you may know, if um, you want to lower your taxes to the lowest possible legal way, you can actually take residence in Puerto Rico. They have the biggest tax incentives. So um, we were uh, there meeting, brainstorming, and doing some incredible stuff together. This is a few years ago. Um, and uh, this is... Uh, uh, one of the best events we've done and we've done other events where I joined him and um, and uh, this is uh, in um, in your area there Broward uh, Palm Beach and Miami area I love that area the area is booming it's going crazy um, and what's happening is in in those events we sometimes tour buildings and talk about various buildings so so we constantly realize that when you get a bunch of people together, brainstorming and thinking together just goes to another level. So I use a lot of technology now with the COVID, I use the Zoom and all this to be able to reach more people and work together. And I have been doing events where I would actually talk to people. I mean, literally um, uh, it's the second um, Saturday of each month where I get on the phone with a bunch of people and just take their questions. I mean, just it's a Q&A on specific deals. And this is like, uh, we, we get about, um, we all keep it 30, 40 people. Some people just listen and take notes. Some people just ask questions. Some people send the questions in advance a day before. And I talk about the actual deals happening. So everybody learns together. Everybody learns from everyone. And we're able to brainstorm on things and, you know, I've been in the business almost 40 years now, so I've done it all and I've seen it all. And a week of my life is like somebody else's entire year because there's so much feedback and so much going on. So we get to talk about somebody trying to do creative financing. Oh, Sharif, I'm trying to sell the property, but I have a loan and all the offers I'm getting are doing this week. What can I do? Well, we talk about wraparound mortgage, but isn't there a do on sale clause? So we talk about details, we define the terms, we talk about the concept itself. We talk about the business model, how to do it. And then we explain exactly in details what actions they need to take. Uh, this program, we started when we couldn't do live events and it actually has been phenomenal and it has taken life of its own. And um, I talk about, these are some of my personal buildings. These are buildings that in my name or in the real estate fund that I have name. So this one, for example, has retail tenants downstairs. I love retail tenants. This one, for example, Diamond International downstairs. They sign for a 10-year lease. They pay triple net. That means they pay the lease net of tax, insurance, and maintenance. They pay 15000 a month. Upstairs got approved to build a hotel. So how do I do this? I explain certain structures where people can duplicate what I have done. Because the first thing about business is to have the knowledge. You can't do much without knowledge. And number two is to take action. And number three is to network. And a lot of people have the knowledge and are willing and able to take action, but then they don't have enough network. So they're not able to get things going. Who is your network? Who do you ask the questions to that have better judgment, maybe a little bit more skills and can increase your luck factor? Here, for instance, I take in a building, this building, and I put it under contract and I started smiling and dialing, calling tenants and I ended up getting a call back from a company called Sunglass Hut. And I put Sunglass Hut here. And then when they said they're willing to come in and they're going to sign for a 10 year lease, I bought the building, bought the building for 1.9 million. When they signed the lease, it went up to 3.9 million. Why? Because they were willing to pay 20,000 a month to be in that location. And that comes with a corporate guarantee. That means they guarantee the lease. Uh, by the way, Sunglass Hut, for instance, is a company that's a division of Luxottica Retail. Luxottica are the ones that make lens crafters. They have all the brand name sunglasses you can imagine that are out of Italy and they have branches in the United States and all over the world. Actually, half a billion human beings wear their glasses. So imagine how powerful their corporate guarantee is. So that's how you do the deals. Uh, down here is a property I have in the fund, 266 Pacheco Street. San Francisco, California, we bought it for 3.8 million. We're gonna just improve the inside, add a little bit square footage from the basement and it's gonna sell at $6 million. You can quote me on this. You can look it up online, 266 Pacheco Street, San Francisco. We just closed on it. 
This one here is a property 2531 Larkin Street. Just, just sold this one. We bought it a couple of years ago, rehabbed it, improved it, sold it for 5.8 million. So we take these luxury homes and we flip them. We take these commercial buildings, either reposition them and add value and keep them, or we only buy them when we bring the big tenants. So, so many different values, so, add, so many different ways to make it happen. And if you know how to structure one type of transactions and repeat it and get better and better at it, you can create your own funds. You can be a fund manager. And, and it doesn't take a lot to be able to master the game because the market is good. This is the United States. It goes cyclical. It goes up, up, up. Two, three years ago, people were telling me the market is too high, it's going to drop. Right now, people are saying, again, the market is going to drop, and it keeps going up. They don't understand certain things. The interest rate is very low. If the interest rate, you get a loan from the bank right now at 3.8%. You could get it at 3 in December or 3.1. Now you get it 3.8. But inflation is 4 and 5%. So how can the government not increase the actual interest rate to be higher than inflation? So it can really stop the actual inflation. It doesn't make sense. You're still ahead of the game because you can borrow at three and a half, four percent, but the inflation is higher. So if you borrow, you're actually making money. So how can it stop? <laughs> so you got to understand the numbers. That's number one. Number two, you have people who bought homes already locked in their personal residence for 30 years fixed. And they're able to make the payments. The payments are pretty low. They got them at 2.9%, 2.75%, et cetera. And they're happy with these properties. So where are the opportunities? The opportunities is what you create as an opportunity. I actually buy these luxury homes from the brokers. So I'm not finding a distressed sale or anything unusual. I'm buying them from the brokers. But what we do is we take a basement and we convert the basement within the envelope. That means we don't go outside the the parameters of the property to get approval from the neighborhood. No, no, within the envelope. That means within the parameters of the property inside the building, and we convert the basement into usable space. We uh, we had a property that was just one floor, and then it had the rooftop like this. We actually dropped the floor. It was such a high floor. So now it's a two level, and, and it was a two bedroom, one bath. Now it has become four bedroom, two and a half bathroom. The value add is incredible. You do that in Miami, you do that in Fort Lauderdale. These are unique markets. So once you understand your market, you're able to make a lot of money. And 2022 brings a lot of commercial opportunities because in commercial real estate, you don't have to worry about all what's happening around the country. As a matter of fact, people were telling me, oh my God, with COVID, you can do much. Retail is so bad. Guess what? Retail grew like crazy. And you know who in retail grew like crazy? The quick service restaurants. They were killing it. They were making more money with less cost. And they even now, the new design is double drive-through lanes for Burger King. You can actually Google later on new designs for fast food. And you could see why you can find these single tenant buildings empty and how to contact tenants and how to actually make the deal happen. And they come in, they sign 10, 15 years. Uh, I just signed the Fat Tuesdays. And they're paying $8,500. They are signing for a 10-year lease with 3% escalation every year. We're giving them four months free rent. But what a beautiful deal. I mean, what a sweet deal. That property with that type of income, I mean, $8,500, just to know the numbers, $100,000 a year. $100,000 a year, it go, the, the value of the building will be around $1.6 million minimum. The, the property empty, anybody could have gotten it at 900000 But with the Fat Tuesday lease, with the corporate guarantee, triple net, it adds so much to its value. So there's a lot of opportunities. And the pandemic actually accelerated certain ways to make a lot of money. And um, yes, maybe the permitting to do construction work, it gets a little slower and all this. But still, the, the upside is huge because there is less inventory out there. A lot of opportunities ahead. There are incredible multifamily assets that are incredibly profitable. Uh, we have actually, we've done a training in the past called Commercial Real Estate Roundtable. And in the Commercial Real Estate Roundtable training, what we did is we dissected the facts system. 
how to find apartment buildings, how to analyze the numbers on apartment buildings, how to control them under contract, how to get the best loans and time the process of the due diligence, how to do it right so you don't make a mistake and how to get the best financing because you can get incredible financing for these. And then how to strategize to get a management company to manage them while you take it to its highest and best use. And we came up with over 25 ways to take these apartment buildings to their highest and best use. Same for retail, same for actual storage facilities, for RV, for assisted living facilities, 12 different types of commercial properties. The commercial real estate roundtable event was so successful that we took the best of each one and created a training for people. So those who wanna focus on retail, those who wanna focus on hotels, you wanna focus on garages, how to actually make money with garage. Do you know, I have a student who took a training with us and focused on garages, got a garage, and then leased part of the garage, just like a few stalls, to a company that does what's called ghost kitchens. So now they're leasing the space from him, making a lot more than he would do with the cars. And the rest of the spaces, we condominiumize them. He can actually sell the parking spaces because there's such scarcity of parking in that residential area, making a killing. Took a property at $2 million. He's making its value now over $5 million. So you're only limited by your ability to, to communicate, your training and your creativity, which comes with the training. So you can repurpose properties. Uh, we believe there are some great trends that are forming. Uh, right now, there are some hotels that are being converted into apartment buildings. There are hotels that you can buy at very good prices and reposition them. When you buy a hotel, what I like about motels and hotels sometimes is that you can get them with the entire crew. I was looking at a hotel, $2.9 million, 75 rooms running at 70% occupancy, and you could see the opportunities to increase it. But it comes with the staff. Well, just take it with the staff and the price you couldn't resist. You, and, and the seller was willing to carry financing and the lender said, if you don't make them payments for the first two years, we're willing to give you the first lien uh, uh, loan. So the down payment you come in is less than 10%. You, you can do that even with apartment buildings today. Do it with a hotel and the numbers work out great and you have a team that runs it. And what's happening? It's a cyclical pattern. So, so you got to understand what's happening and how to position yourself. And we do a lot of these brainstorming uh, sessions where we teach people, we take their questions, and everybody learns from everybody. So we're focusing on different type of properties, single tenant retails. The industrial is phenomenal. And you can do the same strategy you do with the single tenant retail. You do it with industrial. You put it under contract. You look for the big... Uh, uh, companies that want to come in and do the warehousing distributions, which is incredibly growing, especially in areas like next to Fort Lauderdale, Port Everglades, etc. That area is amazing. Amazing. Single tenant, you have opportunities. Rehabbing, expanding homes, repositioning properties. It's endless. We had a property on State Road 84 uh, next to Fort Lauderdale Airport. And it was a very small building, but a big lot. And the people wanted to sell. And we put it under contract. And we got contacted by car rental companies that are from Miami trying to expand next to the airport in Fort Lauderdale. So it's just the opportunities are endless. You just have to start looking not at an empty building, but what is the potential? What's the highest and best use? I mean, you can see a mall that's dying and you say, oh my God, the whole area is dying. Or you can see an opportunity and say, you know what? I can bring a supermarket here or I can actually bring these big gyms that need spaces or I can actually expand with a car dealership, et cetera, because they have huge lots. So that's what we train people to do. And there are seven reasons I want to go over them with you for South Florida commercial real estate and why we feel this is a very strong market. Number one, Florida is one of the friendliest places. It's very pro-business. I don't know if you know, one of the people from Silicon Valley, I'm in Santa Clara today. I'm in Silicon Valley, my home here, and um, it's, it's south of San Francisco. And uh, apparently about a year and a half ago, one of the Silicon Valley billionaires said, sent a, a Twitter and said, I, um, I really need to get out of California. This is getting very expensive. I really would love to move to Miami. The mayor of Miami saw it and responded, what can we do to help you and companies like you to move to Miami? That was unbelievable. It created a huge movement and now several companies have moved out of California coming over to South Florida. 
So there is a lot of stability in the economy there. There's a lot of growth. You have Latin America growing. You have people coming from the East. You got people coming from the Northeast. It's just an incredible area. The population and business growth in South Florida is second to none. It has a great competitive workforce. People are bilingual, trilingual. It's just unbelievable place to grow. Great weather, great retail market, constant demand, foreign investments coming in there, no state taxes. Retirees prefer it for assisted living facilities. You just have to understand the market that you're going to focus on in Florida because you have markets and sub-markets. So focus on an area, focus on a specific type and understand the values. Then focus on the formulas we have, the fact system, how to find the right deals with that, how to analyze the numbers, how to control the properties. And people tell me, oh, but Sharif, I don't have the money. Well, if you have the knowledge, you can attract people to partner with you. If you do the first deal the right way, the second deal, you can become a fund manager and show people, look, I've done this deal, now invest with me. So they're no longer partners. They're actually part owners of the deal. And you are the main person making the deal. And when you actually do a syndication, like raising capital and going to a deal, you get paid an acquisition fee, usually 3%, a management fee, and a disposition fee. So disposition means when you sell, let's say you bought it at 10 million, and I know you're thinking now, 10 million, Sharif, I haven't started with 1 million or I'm, I'm, I'd like to stay around 3 million. Don't think with your own money and time and energy. Now, if you set up a real estate fund, you're thinking with a lot higher level. And when you get a property for 10 million, it comes with a lot of people. It comes with a lot of assets and a lot of income that helps you afford the structure that you need. So you get a property at 10, you make certain changes, you adjust it, you get good loans, etc. What happens is, let's say four or five years later, you sell it at, let's say, 15 million or even 12 million. You put 2 million down and you sell it at 12, you get 100% profit over those four or five years plus all the cash flow you receive. Well, guess what? You can actually do a 1031 exchange and have the whole investors group roll forward with you. And you already made your acquisition fee. 3% on a $10 million acquisition fee is $300,000. Somebody was asking me the other day, why does Grant Cardone want to buy properties at two, three hundred million dollars? His acquisition fee is three percent. He made three to nine million dollars buying it. And then he got the management fee, which is 20 percent of what's coming. And then on the disposition fee, he's going to make money. He make on the upside 30 to 40 percent of the gain. That that two million dollar gain, you're going to get yourself uh, 600,000 to 800,000. So and is that bad? No, it's great because you're helping these software engineers, these doctors, these other people who are busy doing what they do best and they want to invest their money and they're looking for trustworthy, experienced people. And that's what we train you and we guide you through. We have people who have big experiences in different type of assets. I had a guy who sold the storage facility and now he's got the money, he's doing a 1031 exchange, but he wants to be in different type of properties. That's what we discuss on these Saturday calls. And... Um, and I mean, I can't think of better markets than Florida and California. Really, these two markets are really unbelievable, as well as Texas. Now, Washington State is great. Illinois is great, etc. But you know it, and I know it. Florida, there is a lot of money in it. It's easier to even sell properties there. It's easier to grow there, easier to get loans, work with local banks. It's just opportunities are endless. So there are still distressed properties. Because there are foreclosures all the time. People get divorces, get sick, uh, get relocated, etc. So we will talk more on these uh, calls that we do every other Saturday. That's what I'm actually wanting to present to you. Um, on the, and I call them the commercial real estate deal pro. Because I'm going to make you a pro. And you're going to see how we mastermind. Because I ask for feedback. Everybody thinks together. And it takes another level completely. We do them on Zoom calls second Saturday of each month at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So uh, anybody from California, it's 10 o'clock. You're all from Florida, so it's 1 p.m. It's a very convenient time on Saturday. And by the way, we tape them. So whoever joins us for these, we archive the calls. You can listen to the old calls. Every call is evergreen because we're talking about specific structures and deals. And you get to hear what other people asked. These people are doing the transactions. They're in the middle of something or they're starting something. Questions about financing, about finding the deals, about negotiating with a broker, etc. Many brokers are on these calls as well. 
So the group power in brainstorming and, and, and the mastermind that comes out of it is phenomenal. Those who are interested in this, these are monthly. And uh, I want you to please call Ashley uh, at 844-720-1031. Again, 844-720-1031. Or email her, Ashley, it's A-S-H-L-E-E. -E. Not EY, Ashley, A S H L E E, at cmrei.com. Uh, Sharif Medawar Real Estate Investing, cmrei.com. So, those who are interested in this, this is how it looks like. So every month, I work with the group, we get to know each other, it keeps growing, and it's just a wonderful way for you to ask the questions and really get personalized answers. It's not too, it's not generic out there, it's tailored for the people doing the deals and everybody learns from everyone. And uh, I sometimes share statistics and show certain things. Uh, people ask the questions. We get quite a few people on the calls and everybody gets the chance. And it's not limited to an hour, an hour and a half. Sometimes I go two hours and you wanna hang up and you go, listen, I, actually I'm surprised that 99% of the people stay along if I stay two hours. So if you're ready to invest in any of the 12 different types of commercial properties that are out there, let's get started. There are methodical strategies for you to make it happen, whether it's apartment buildings, storage facilities, hospitality, which is one of my favorite, land development, senior living facilities, offices and medical buildings, retail buildings, eco-friendly and all the programs and incentives that come with the eco-friendly stuff, mobile home parks, manufactured facilities, right? Warehouses, industrial parks, parking garages, gas stations. So all this is available for you and will help you develop the skills for it. And if you want to start in this, this is how we do it for you. The mastermind, we have the opportunity for you to have a university access to learn the system that we have used for commercial real estate. There are checklists and resources for you to get to know exactly how to do it. So if you want to learn, let's say, apartment buildings, you click on it. This is part of your program. You click on apartment buildings, learn how to find the deals, all the websites you need to go to for sale by owner, government foreclosure, bank foreclosure. It's impossible not to find a good deal on these. Impossible, because this is where the good deals are. You're going to learn how to analyze the numbers, what checklist to go through, what to look for to understand the market, what supplies exist in the market, how, what contracts, how to access the contracts. Who will do the financing? Let's say you're buying a mobile home park. Who does the finance? It's not going to be Wells Fargo. It's not going to be Chase. But there are specific lenders and we'll show you where to go and who to talk to to get these lenders to work with you and then how to strategize, take them to their highest and best use. So, so that's, that's very important for your success. And we, again, share the knowledge. The program for the Commercial Deal, Deal Pro Mastermind is 2995 This is the call every second Saturday for a full year, 12 months. Um, people say, well, Sharif, can I just call you and talk to you yes it's five hundred dollars an hour and if you prefer if you just get on these calls and ask me the same question everybody can learn from so this is the commercial real estate deal pro mastermind monthly live deal analysis and q a with me i'm the one handling these calls i'm not not somebody else coming through a network to brainstorm on all your deals commercial real estate investing a quick start kit that we send you it's all online, commercial real estate and deal making virtual course. You will learn online. It's me teaching. You click stuff that you have to fill out, little test exams. So you're really advancing and know exactly what you're doing. So you move with certainty, not just with speed. And we give you resources, checklist, and the legal documents you need to make it happen. And I'm going to give you some bonuses today. So you're wondering why you should invest? Well, the real money is in commercial real estate. You can do residential flips, you can do residential rentals that are great, but really if you wanna scale the game, you're gonna do the same work, but do it with a couple more zeros next to it and make the big money. So, so I wanna give you the right foundation with the education when we send you all the information. You're gonna see how the commercial real estate market changes in front of you and how to take advantage of that. This is how I was able to acquire these big buildings. This is how I was able to understand some government programs, tax incentives, et cetera, that can actually work for me. And I share the knowledge. I like to share the knowledge. I believe in creating a bigger pie. I explain to people 
how I actually even present and pitch to investors when I have a presentation to raise capital and deploy the capital, raise capital as in like people giving me the money and how to do it legally and the proper way. And I present the trends of real estate. So bonus number one, which has a $3,000 value. This is the commercial real estate round table I've been talking to you about, where we talk about 12 different type of commercial properties. And you get to see the, it's all online. It's a course that you're taking online. I'm going to make you an expert in it. I've had people, and you can actually look on our success stories. We have over 2,000 video success stories on YouTube from students. I've been teaching for, for many, many years, for over 15, 20 years now. We've been teaching, and we've had the best results. And you, you don't have to believe me. Just look online, what people say. And uh, we teach you step by step. So from how to understand the fact system and analyze it to how to actually do some case studies and pass certain tests to move one step at a time in 12 different types. I'm not telling you, go ahead and select one. Oh, Joe, you're going to do the storage and Susie, you're going to do just the warehousing. You're going to get access to the 12 of them. Okay. That's a $3,000 value. You're going to see the, the sections from live events when I'm teaching the feedback I'm giving the students, the students participating. These were the most powerful events we've done. Bonus number two. So now you've done the first deal, you've gone the training, you've asked the question, do it. I'm gonna give you bonus number two, which is how to set up your own syndication. You wanna become a commercial real estate developer. You wanna become a syndicator in residential or commercial. Well, I'm gonna share with you the training we've done, which is an intensive two-day training. It was $3,000, we did it in several parts in the country. We've actually done it in Miami also. And you will get the best excerpts from the trainings. And here's how it goes. It's a, I teach you the syndication, what it means to syndicate, what it means to pool investors money together, 25,000, 50,000, somebody has IRA money doing nothing. Somebody can borrow from 401k and how to do that legally with the proper paperwork, how to actually, uh, in that training, we talk about DCBA, which is a training I created a number of years ago about the word definition. People get lost with terminology. Maybe English is not their first language. Maybe their English is their first language, but they're not in real estate. So the lingo is completely different. So first we start with the definition. The C is for the concept. So you understand why. why. Why are we doing storage facilities? What's the idea behind garages or whatever? And then the B is for the business model. What to do first? One, two, three. So you're raising capital. What do I do first? You start with the business plan. And then what? Then you, you, you actually... You review the business plan, you present it to an attorney that does the SEC filing because you are actually going to be dealing with Securities and Exchange Commission. And it may get scary if you don't know what you're doing, but that training is going to show you a lot how to do it. And then the A is for the action to succeed. So definitions, concept, business model, and application for success or action for success. And what are your responsibilities as a syndicator? Wouldn't that be great? great? You have one lifetime to live. Don't you want to take it to another level? I'm not telling you go raise unbelievable amounts of money, something you're uncomfortable about. I'm going to tell you, now you can look at the bigger deal. Instead of looking at a small motel around the corner at uh, 500000 that they want to sell that has six units, why not look at the Hilton Hotel that has 150 units? Why not look at the Embassy Suites Hotel in Lake Buena Vista in Orlando? Why not look at something right by the airport in Fort Lauderdale? You can do it. Because you'll understand what you're looking for and how to raise the capital and you'll be able to afford something better with better management, better, better results. And what compliance you need to have? Compliance. You cannot be presenting to everybody. You have to present certain type of people. You have to present in a certain way. The ethics that are involved in this business because the watchful eyes of the Securities and Exchange Commission. And how do you do creative deal making when you're actually this, the syndicator? and how real estate funds work. And you can work together. You can actually work with my fund. You can work with Anish's fund. You know, Anish has the fund called DPI and we work together. He works, his fund works with SFI fund. So how come? Because we know we're able to work together and everybody benefits. We create a bigger pie. And by the way, in our funds, neither Anish nor I, nor I charge any fees. We don't charge an acquisition fee. We don't charge a management fee. We don't charge a disposition fee. How? You will learn how, and you'll learn why. And how can we succeed with it? We succeed a lot better and a lot more consistently. You learn also about crowdfunding. I talk about in that training, 
how, what's the difference between syndications and partnerships where partners tell you what to do and they have opinions, they want to tell you this and that versus syndication where people give you the money and you're making the decision on their behalf. That's why you're following rules, there are compliances. What if you want to do a joint venture? Yes, you as the fund manager can have your fund do joint ventures like with my fund, with Anisha's fund, at, with, with, with some contractor if you want. And how to solicit investors and the business plan with the five Ps, write them down. I'll tell you what the five e Ps are. The, you're going to start with who are the people involved? What's the product? What's the project? What's the property? Um, the next P is going to be what's the positioning? What's so different about what you do versus what other people do? Or what the positioning of that property? Why is it so good? Why is it so wonderful? What are you going to do with it? And then four is the performance. And the performance is a story with the money. We're going to take this prop. You're going to expand it this way. We're going to add another. We're going to split the uh, units into condos. We're going to sell them this way. What performance you're going to perform and how long. And then the last P is the profit. How much you're going to raise and what profit you're going to give the investors. Well, I'm going to give you so much cash flow and then so much from the game. And once you know how to structure one, it's going to change your life. Actually, one deal can change your life. And once you know how to structure these, there are ways to do the pitch. The pitch is when you present with an end goal of raising the money ethically, safely, and profitably. And that training alone, I mean, people paid us $3,000. I just don't do the live trainings anymore. I'm so busy investing. It's been just an amazing ride. We do huge deals right now, but it's not the idea in the size of the deal. The idea is in the profit. What is the profit percentage? I don't mind at all doing a half a million dollar deal that's very profitable versus a $5 million deal that's less profitable. So you will learn how this whole thing works together. So let me recap. Commercial Real Estate Deal Pro Mastermind. You're going to learn the steps to invest. You're going to have the quick starter kit, which I just shared with you, the Commercial Real Estate Deal Making Virtual Training. This is a 20-hour training you're going to have, and it's step-by-step. You're going to do it like a Duolingo, you know, when you learn uh, the, the things are the apps online, you click, 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 you learn parts, you pass a little test, you go to the next part. You didn't pass the test, you go back and revise. And uh, this is success-oriented team. So you're going to be set up to apply the knowledge, not like just general information. It's applicable stuff. We're talking in these uh, mastermind calls about stuff being happening right now in the market and, and up-to-date information. Uh, you're going to get the videos and live in-person events that I've done, the checklist and resources to automate your business. The key thing is not to get so busy, but to actually find the right structure where you can step back and have the team, the tools, and the training, and the actual technology to keep you moving forward and, have, uh, and gain momentum. So the 12 uh, months for the mastermind every second Saturday, um, the next one we're, we're doing is actually in 10 days, uh, March 12th. So enroll now so you have time to go through all this good stuff and be ready for the calls because it's going to really take your mind to another level. It's uh, The Raising Capital video is $3,000 value. I'm including it in this. The one-year access to commercial real estate course, $3,000. The, um, the actual entire thing has a value of $89.85. And you enroll today, I'm going to give it to you for less than $1,000, $9.97. That's less than actually $100 per call for the next 12 months. Less than $100 when I charge $500. And I'm not just telling you, I'm charging. Try to reach me and you will see, you'll have to go through Ashley and she'll tell you. I, and I only take like two calls a week. I'm, I'm too busy. I much prefer to look for deals and work my deals and talk to my architect and my developer. We're just touring a property today. And just, just a few minutes ago, literally speaking... Here I am with everybody at the property. I just want to show you this property. You can see the time, by the way. I'm in California, so you can see the time right here. You see, you see right there? I barely drove from the property in San Francisco. See, this is the team. This is the, the structure engineer. He's the architect. And this is my nephew. He came in. You know what? I got to charge my nephew. This is not fair. I'm family members coming in for free. <laughs> I see this, I was meeting with the contractor and everybody, exciting stuff. And it just completely different type of business than working in an office or something. You're going there, your network starts networking with the other people. So I got these people together and now everybody met, we toured the building 
And now everybody's like so excited going to the next level because they want to make it happen. They want to take it to another level. I'm going to teach you how to do this. I spent some of my time by the beach in Cancun. I own a place there. I've been living there for uh, on and off for 15 years. And if it wasn't for real estate, I wouldn't be able to. I mean, I spent the whole year during COVID by the beach. I'm not telling you, oh, look at how great I am, how successful. I work hard. I've always worked hard. I love working, but it's like a game. And whether I am doing the deal in Puerto Rico, in Florida, in Texas, in California, the background changes, but the game goes on. And if you take it as a game, you don't stress about it too much. And you don't have to bite more than you can chew. But as you learn to do a little deal incrementally, your life changes. And there is the tipping point where you go way bigger than you thought. So let's wrap it up. You want to learn? You want to make it happen? Good. Now, you're going to get all the training, 997. All what I talked to you about is all included. Call Ashley, 844-720-1031. 844-720-1031, ashley at cmrai.com. In case you want to email her, put your phone number so she can call you back either tonight um, or she will call you back first thing tomorrow morning. This is going to be for the first 10 people. I'm not playing with you. I'm honestly selling it for $3,000. You can actually get on the calls and start talking and networking with people. You will see how it works. And this is the offer we're doing because of the relationship I have with Anish. I think most of you know what a great person he is. And it's a really a pleasure to be part of what he's doing and help everybody grow. And we all grow together. So with this, without further ado, here it is, guys. Let's make it happen. and look forward to seeing you in the next call on March 12th. So I am Sharif Medawar, and it's been a pleasure sharing all this good stuff with you. Great job, Sharif. So can we take a couple questions? Yeah. You all right. Me. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We had a few questions come in uh, during the presentation. Uh, Maximo is asking, the Sunglass Hut deal, did you get it under contract before closing or did you have equitable interest before you were closing? So I had it under contract and I started smiling and dialing. So when you have a property under contract, you have a period of time to change your mind. So you usually have, you know, 45 to 60 days. So I had 45 days and what happened is I started smiling and dialing and then I got a call and then I was able to make the deal happen. So I, I knew that I had to buy it. Now let's say I, you put a property under contract and you smile and dial and call these big tenants and none of them are interested. You don't have to buy it. You just walk away. You just walk away. Awesome. Um, let's see here. Next question. Out of the 12 lanes to invest in commercial, what are your top three and why? Ah, my top three. I like retail as my number one favorite strategy because um, I, I will not be buying the building unless I know it has an instant increase in value. For instance, I get a property that's vacant at, let's say, a million dollars under contract. You can use any, if a million too small, use a bigger number. If a million is too big, use a smaller number. We have a property under contract now at 440. Okay, so, but anyway, million dollar under contract, it's vacant. If it wasn't vacant, they wouldn't be selling it at a million. So we put it under contract at a million dollars. And we have 45 days to do a due diligence. And what we do, we start calling the tenants. Once we have the, one of these national tenants, like the quick service restaurants that want to grow, and they say, I am Chick-fil-A and I want to buy, I want to rent the space for 10 years. And we're going to pay you, let's say, 8300 a month. 8333 times 12 is 100000 a year. 100000 a year in Florida today. That's anywhere, frankly, in the country. With a big tenant like this, paying the 100000 triple net, meaning net of tax, insurance, and maintenance, with a corporate guarantee, guess what happens? They want in. The property goes in value by up by 600000 that means that property, I'm buying it at a million because I got it under contract at a million. When I go to the bank, I show them, here is a letter of intent from the tenant. Would you give me a loan? They will give me the million dollars. They'll give me 900. They'll give me 800. But the property went up to 1.6. So we buy it. We put the tenant, I can refinance, cash out money. Some other people have to fix up, find the property, get a loan, hard money, fix the property, or do wholesaling, send mailers, and work their butt off and spend so much money and get discouraged at the end. Okay, so maybe no tenant called you back, you walk away, you learn more, you're practicing, you get better, but you don't have a downside and you're not hacking away with a hammer and you're actually 
talking to corporate tenants. So if it doesn't happen on the first one, it's going to happen on the third one. Yep. And Sharif, so I got a question that I always get to. Sure. Um, one of the questions, because of COVID, you know, you're hearing, you constantly hear that, oh, retail is dead. Everyone's so like, you're actually in the space. I mean, I kind of know the answer, but like, what would you tell our, our group about what you, what you are seeing in the commercial space in general when, you know, other, other people are saying, you know, yes, yes. It, you know, it's when people say it, if they're my students, I educate them. But when people out there say it, I just tell them, oh, you're right. Do you want to sell the building? <laughs> okay. So <laughs> you don't have to believe me. You can Google right now. You can Google right now and say to everybody and, and, and just Google it and put uh, QSRs growth, which quick service restaurants growth. It's, it has been the fastest growing period in their history of growth. Um, you can actually see around you how, how much growth there is with these guys. What has happened in the last uh, two years because of COVID has been Uber Eats, uh, all the delivery stuff. Now we look for specific type of buildings, which I'll talk about in these, in these trainings, et cetera, because you will hear other students doing the deeds because we, we have like advanced trainings where people really get into it and want to do partnerships and stuff. And you can tell, like, for example, we look for buildings that are vacant, but have a drive-through because as soon as you call a tenant, leave voicemail message, I have this property at this address with this traffic and this drive-through, guess what? They're calling you back. We're very interested. When can we see it? Can you send pictures? Can you do this? So we have methodical ways, a business model to follow. And you can Google and see for yourself what has happened with these quick service trusts. Because I can tell you all day long how wonderful they are and how much growth that has been. Just look at the numbers online. Go ahead. No, Ashley's got another one for you. Yes. Okay, sorry. Um, the next question is related back to the Sunglass Hut. How were you able to actually put the deal with Sunglass Hut under contract before, sorry, how were you able to make the deal with Sunglass Hut before buying the property? What if someone else came and put the property under contract in the meantime? Well, okay, let, let's follow the sequence here. I call and I put it under contract. So now who's controlling the property? Me. I have it for 45 days. So now I am controlling the property. By law, I have to have access to the property to do inspections. I start smiling and dialing, describing the property. When a tenant calls me back, all I need is one to call me back. And I tell the tenant, come and take a look. I'm accessing the property that I'm buying. And I go in. And I show them the space. They say, we're interested. We have a letter of intent. That's the letter I need to go to the bank and close the deal. And from the time they see it to the time I get the letter of intent is a week, it's five days. It depends what, how long it's going to take them to come and see it. Mm -hmm. All right, next question. But, Can but I, 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 want to, I want to bring something to the screen first because yeah. Anish's question, maybe nobody's going to Google so I'm, I'm Googling for you. Okay, how about that? Okay, let me close this. Let me open another screen. Uh, and here is, I just Googled it as you were asking me, Ashley. Everybody see my screen? Yes. QSR growth. Oops, what just popped up here? QSR growth is fast and furious. December 10, 2021. They were talking about how quick service restaurants have been growing like crazy. Okay, and just look at it. Just look at what they're saying out there, how fast food restaurants have been growing like crazy. Okay, so, okay, ask me. Other questions? I, I got a question that I, uh, someone just messaged me. Is like, on average, like how long are, your, are the tenants staying? 10 years. We don't, yeah, we don't sign them for less than 10 years. And by the way, if they don't stay for 10, let's say they change their mind and they say, oh, I want to cancel the lease they have to pay a penalty because there is a corporate guarantee. They're going to have to pay penalties in the hundreds of thousands so, or they go dark. I'm sure you've seen places say sublease, go dark. That means they don't operate, but they keep paying the rent because corporate guarantee, you can go after their corporate office, your publicly traded company or go after the banks that gave them the credit lines to expand like Wells Fargo, et cetera. Okay, go ahead. All right. Uh, next question. What are your thoughts on commercial sale leasebacks? Okay, commercial sale lease back. Interesting one. We had an office space and this company wanted, they said, listen, we're going to sell 
and want to lease back from you. So we want to stay, but we need the cash. So we're going to sell and lease back. So be cautious of one thing that's very important. Make sure you run their financials. You check their background. You get audited financials because you don't want them to be saying to you, look, I'm willing to pay 200000 a year for that lease. And you're like, oh my God, what a steal. I'm going to give them you know, two and a half million only for 200,000 income per year. What a great return. You pay them, they pay you for a couple of months and then they file bankruptcy or mm -hmm. then they disappear or they say, we want to cancel the lease. So that the key factor here is sale lease back has to be that they really want to stand behind it. And I'm not saying they're all setting you up to fail. I, I've, ha I've had students that learned that strategy. I had a guy that actually set up a business and said to me, I'm working all day long in this. What do I do? I said, buy the building. He said, well, my lease is coming up for renewal. Should I just go to another building? I said, just tell the, the owner of the building, I will renew the lease, but I want an option to buy. Well, the owner said, that's great. I'm going to sell it anyway. I'll give you an option to buy because I don't have to pay commission to anybody. So he took the lease with an option to buy, renewed the lease, went to the bank and showed the bank, I've been paying for five years. So this guy, I want to buy from him. So he bought the building. He became an owner user, increased the lease on himself, and then sold the building and did a lease back. So he cashed out so much more money and went and expended in two locations. Five locations later, he sold the businesses and kept the buildings. And at the end of the day, that's what you want. You don't want the business. You don't want to be hacking every day in a business. You want the building because the building will not complain, will produce income like the commercial buildings I just showed everybody in Puerto Rico. I am sitting here and the buildings are making money. And, and Fat Tuesday is going to pay me at 211 Cristo. And right next door, I have a jewelry place that is going to pay me. It's a big jewelry company that is in Martinique and Barbados and Jamaica. And they're in Puerto Rico. I have um, uh, a company, Watch My Watch, that are in Miami in Fort Lauderdale. And they're also down the street at 205 Cruz Street in Old San Juan. What a beautiful place, Old San Juan. It's a blessing. Just to go there is fun. Okay, continue. I get too excited. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, my hair is looking bad, by the way. I'm sorry. I'm just get excited. My hair stands up. Oh, my word. <laughs> Mine too. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Two baldies. Okay. All right. Uh, next question coming in is a follow up on a question where somebody asked you, What are your top three types of assets? You answered retail, oh, sorry, but what sorry, are the sorry. other two? I got too excited about retail. So the other one, I like the mixed use. Mixed use is one of the best ways to grow because mixed use is downstairs retail and second, third floor. If you can have a second, third floor, or you can have just a second floor, it could be residential. Uh, it's residential, it could be long-term or Airbnb. It could be office space. It could be medical space. And go, going back to Puerto Rico, that's what I was leading to is, I showed you downstairs, I had Diamond International. I still have them there. They've been there for a while. They're going to continue forever. And upstairs, I have a hotel that's going to be built. So that mixed use. Now I have steady income from downstairs paying the rent, the paying, paying the mortgage, I'm sorry. And upstairs is going to be all pure profit. The bank is going to give me money for the construction. Once we finish it and it's done, it's going to produce income. Do I want to run the hotel? I may run the hotel, but there are companies that told me they run hotels. Do I want to do the construction? Well, I know how to do it. I just need to get the right pieces. Okay. So second type is the actual mixed use. Third type I like is hotels. Now, I like hotels because you can take a hotel and convert it into so many things. So the highest and best use of hotels is phenomenal. You can do extended stay. Market slows down, you can do extended stay. Rented weekly, rented, rented monthly. You can take a hotel and you can do vacation, uh, vacation uh, uh, like pre-sale points. Uh, you, you got to get certain approvals from each uh, city that you're going to do that in. Uh, like uh, we were looking actually at the deal in Orlando where I, I had to get approvals to sell instead of selling the deeds, you know, like uh, timeshare, I could sell points. So I can pre-sell the occupancy of the room. How would you like that? You pre-sell the occupancy, you get money, you do what's called accelerated depreciation, you write off everything early. So you get all this money, pay no taxes, pay down or pay off your loans. You, you raise money to do the deal, then refinance and cash out some investors if you want them out or give them some money and get them into another deal. So I love hotels, but hotels is a specialized field. Uh, it's something I like uh, and I've, I grew up in it. 
I used to manage hotels. I used to work for Hilton. Actually, I was a manager. I actually, I started very low as a management trainee and I started growing in the business. And I was in my early 20s when a billionaire in the name of Edmond Bessari met me in a hotel lobby. I was working at the Century Plaza Hotel in Los Angeles. This is next to Beverly Hills. And he stopped me in the hotel. He said, Sharif, how old are you? I said, oh, I'm, I'm going to be 21. And he said, I see you working from 6 a.m. to 10, 11 at night. What's wrong with you? I said, I want to learn everything. You see, I'm going to move up to general manager. They gave me a golden name tag. He said, come and work for me. It changed my life. So hotels, I know the potential of hotels. I think anybody studying hotels and you have the chance to study it in the commercial real estate round table. I am the one covering that section. I cover all these sections and you got to listen to it. I tell you, if you buy a hotel, there is something called a market report that not anybody knows. I've seen big companies don't even realize how to check what's called the intrinsic value. Like what's the hotel performing? But how about that performance in the market? So you got to check the intrinsic value and the extrinsic value. That means what's the outside? You can tell me this hotel is running at 90% occupancy, $200 average daily rate. My next question is, okay, tell me about the market. Well, the market is running at 98% occupancy, $300. Ah, you see now the difference? It's intrinsic, extrinsic. So I love hotels. And that same breath, I'd like to talk about what I don't, I'm not crazy about. I like all kinds, but what I'm not crazy about is development from the ground up. They're very profitable, but they could also be extremely disastrous. There is nothing more common than a bankrupt developer. So you better know what you're doing. You better time it right. And, and the market drops, time for you to get development. And people do it backwards because by the time you get the approval and you build it and all this market came back, it's cyclical. So developments, I'm very cautious about. I try to avoid them as much, much as possible, unless it's like a no-brainer, okay? There are some no-brainers. <laughs> and number two, um, I'm not crazy about assisted living. Yes, they're tooted all over. They're great, and they may be great for other people. Not for me. It, it, it irks me. I am very sad. I tour them. I have investors that I know that have them, and I just cannot. It's just very hard for me to see older people sitting by themselves. I remember visions of this. This lady sitting, looking out the window, crying. And I wanted to talk to her. I said, no, 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 you can't talk to her. She does that every day. And she just reminisces about her. I mean, she should be in her home. She should be with her family. I just can't deal with these for emotional reasons. And uh, uh, number three is uh, when you take these um, class D, not class C, class D apartment buildings, where to collect your money, you have to have a machine gun. You have to have a good relationship with the police department, a car park. Look, life is too short to try to change the world. These places should be handled by government, not by individuals like me and you. And uh, you can take a C and make it a B, make it an A, but going to these neighborhoods where it's just, these people are mad at life for whatever that passed, whatever happened, I'm not gonna be investing in these, okay? And no matter if the properties and, you know, it is, it's great or whatever. And, and look, it could be profitable for others. The three that I don't dislike, are very profitable for some other people. I have no problem with people doing it and I help them and I tell them the best ways. We even do case studies on stuff like that. Okay, continue, sorry. I, I got one that uh, I just got here. So, so what are some common mistakes for newbies trying to get into commercial? Ah. What are some of the things that you've seen is probably the easiest way that I could say that, that you've, you know, it's, it really, they got in and then they got out because something didn't work. So what okay, were those good. So really it boils down to, let, let's talk about the three I like. They go to a retail building, they get excited about the location, the traffic, this, this is the drive-through and they buy it vacant. They just bought a problem. They say, well, I can't afford it. And they bought the problem. First of all, you can't get financing on a vacant building unless you show them that the big tenant is coming or a tenant is coming or you're gonna operate it yourself. So they end up with a problem instead of an opportunity. Instead of buying an asset that gives them freedom, they buy a problem that encumbers their life. And then next thing they go home, they can't talk to the husband, they can't talk to the wife, they can't stand the kids, they can't take the phone calls from work. And next thing you know, their life is caving in, they think the whole world is against them. Well, you, you've done it the wrong way. You put the cart before the horse. So that's one. In hotels, for example, they'll get into deals where they don't have the knowledge to run a hotel. And they don't have the network to ask the right questions to get to know what to do. So people say, well, okay, uh, Sharif is doing these uh, conference calls and she's available to give me one-on-one. -on -one or 
And they, they don't want to do that. They just want to find their own way. Well, that's not very smart because life is too short by the time you learn it and find what mistakes there are and figure out how many you should avoid or make to survive. You're not going to make it because any investment starts with the assessment of risk. You don't even know how to assess the risk. <laughs> and the third one is the mixed use. They take it and they don't understand very well what to do with it. And they don't know where to look or who to ask for what to do. Should I take the residential and make it office? Should I take that office and turn it into residential vacation ownership? What would that rental income be? Uh, what would be best? Who do I ask? And then they ask somebody who's their competition. They ask somebody in their market. Do you think some, my neighbor coming close to me, asking me, how much do you make in the Airbnb? I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell him I'm making $12,000 on a two bedroom, two bath property. No, I'm going to tell him, hey, well, what's your property like? It's three bedroom, two bath. Do you have a view? No, I don't have much of a view. You don't have a view. You shouldn't do every, you know what? Why don't I lease it from you? Because I have a staff member that wants to come in and I need to help him out. I'm going to give him a story because it's my competition. So they don't, they, the mistake they make, they can discern, they can differentiate between who is cooperate, cooperating with them and who can compete with them, who they should compete with and block or attack and who they should work with and enhance and grow. And that's why I say, you create a syndication, you grow with everybody. I can tell my neighbor now, invest with me. Let me take your property, put it in the syndication. Let's grow together. I'll make it easy for you because whoever is managing this for me will managing that for you. So now it's a whole different conversation. So I always look, where is the agreement? And I find the newbies are so scared. Take a new person and tell them, what ideas do you have? They're afraid to tell you their ideas. <laughs> They're afraid of everything. everything. Everything for them is, is fear. One more thing. So you have somebody who gets trained and the spouse doesn't support them, whether it's a male spouse or a female spouse. So they go home and they tell the wife or the husband, honey, I want to do this. Well, if the spouse has not been trained or is not even supporting what they're doing, it's going to say, because they're afraid, don't do it. Don't do this, don't do that. So the beauty about online training now and doing stuff like this, is they can at least come and listen a little bit and say, this is interesting, let's do that. And do baby steps. People that tell me, I found a deal for 20 million and I asked the guy, have you done any deals yet? No, I've not done anything. So how can you start by eating the elephant in one bite? So yeah, there are many mistakes. I can write books on mistakes and, and I share them quite often. I, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna put you on the spot. So this is a little off topic is sure. in, in your commercial career, you've been doing this obviously almost 40 years or so. Um, mm -hmm. what were some of your biggest mistakes? Okay, so yeah, because we, because you know what happens, right? Like you're obviously an expert, you've been doing this for a long time. Same thing for me flipping houses. So they yeah. only see the finished product now. Yes. And, you know, these guys have been, you know, following me on these webinars. They know my pain points, you know, yes. losing everything. So what, you know, what, you know, what were some of the things that you ran into? So, okay. Yeah, so I'm putting you on the spot. So, but. yes, no, no, it's great. I can tell you that almost every deal, you look back at it and you say, I could have done this a little bit better. I could have done a little bit faster that I could have done this squeezed a little bit here, etc. So, and even in relationships, if you go back and say, Geez, I just talked to them. I could have said this a little bit faster. I could have not said that. I should have omitted this information, et cetera. So going back and looking, uh, some mistakes were, like I give you one mistake that's still lingering till now. In, um, I do these in California and in Puerto Rico and everything in between. I like to stay in warmer places, okay? With all due respect to Canadians, if any Canadians are on the call. <laughs> so in 2017, there was a hurricane Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico. I think everybody in the world knew about it because, I mean, it made worldwide news. It's very sad. So one of my tenants, uh, without saying name, because it's a big national tenant and we're in a lawsuit. So you could see the end where it's going. <laughs> they claim to have not access, they, they could not access the space. Well, luckily I have taken my GoPro camera. I couldn't fly in for three weeks. I've taken my GoPro camera and I filmed uh, Old San Juan, from Cristo Street to Fortaleza Street to Tanka Street. So the film was taken three weeks after the hurricane. After paying me rent, after the hurricane happened, they did not open, but they continued paying rent because we had a corporate guarantee. Well, a few months later, almost nine months later, they sent me a letter saying, we're terminating the lease because you cannot fix the space. 
because the lease says if there is structural damage, the landlord has to fix the space, but they pay everything. They pay maintenance and this. So they didn't notify me the right way. They didn't do this and this, this. So what happened is I did not document enough. The mistake I made is I didn't document enough. Like I called and it was a friendly call. Hey, Phil, to the people in charge, how come you haven't opened? Oh, don't worry about it. We're talking to the insurance. A couple of months later, I'm like, hey, Jenny, I talked to Phil and he said, I don't worry about it, but you guys haven't opened. The whole street opened. The cruises are back. We're, 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 business is back. We're, we're really coming. You know, Puerto Rico se levante, they kept saying in Spanish, right? And I did not document it. So nine months later, when they said, we canceled the lease, they had two and a half years left and they wanted me to refund them the nine months or 10 months that they paid. And this was 25,000 a month. So that's a quarter of a million for 10 months. So they owed me almost over half a million and they wanted me to refund them 250. So we ended up uh, in a lawsuit, of course, and the loss, we were supposed to, the, 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 the lawsuit should have been settled within two years, but now it's lingering. And, and now we discovered that actually they were lying because they said we couldn't open for months and months. We couldn't even open the door. Well, when I took the GoPro camera and filmed, it showed, and it's loaded on YouTube. You could see my video on YouTube. It says Puerto Rico after the hurricane and it says Sharif Marawan. And I'm saying, okay, it's all water here. Everything is closed, but their store was open and they were working inside. So I was able to expose them, but by coincidence, not by planning. I should have been more methodical about it and, and be a little bit more, having a bit more malice. That's a big company. They're not going to be so easy to deal with. That's a mistake that has lingered on with lawsuit over 100,000 in fees. At the end, I'm going to win because we now found out that they collected money from the insurance, which they denied. And the judge now said, hey, we need to do a summary judgment. They're going to pay me half a million. Yeah. I'm just hoping to get the extra 100,000 attorneys. We released the space, by the way. That's, yeah. that's where fast, Fat Tuesday is coming, huh? Oh. <laughs> <Downstairs only. laughs> to 11 Cristo. Oh, yeah. You're going to make sure there's some liquor in that spot, yeah. huh? Make yeah, sure and then some other... <laughs> some other mistakes like um you know like i i sold the building and i thought i got a very good price and then later on i started thinking oh my god i could have split the upstairs i could have sold it as condos i could have made so much more but then you're just happy for the other person and ironically i called the guy and i said listen i could have done this and that with the building so i'm happy for you congratulations and his reply was Sharif, you've been so good to me. And this is very unusual that a guy is happy for some, some other guy doing deals. Do you have another building for sale? And I sold him another building. So at the end, it worked out. As long as you're, you're, you, you give without remembering and you take without forgetting and you, you speak without offending and you listen without defending, you will do fine over time, you know? Yeah. But and I could tell you so many more. This this <laughs> this will be a great topic for the next uh, March 12th. I'm going to use that and yeah. I'm going to share it with people. Uh, absolutely. Tour. The other <laughs> message I got was, how did you, I mean, you were talking about you were in California. So how did you pick, you know, of all things, old San Juan or Puerto Rico that uh, wouldn't be on the radar for most okay. people, you know? So the real estate fund uh, I have, as you know, focuses on San Francisco, California, mainly and old San Juan, Puerto Rico. San Francisco, because it's 14 miles, very scarce inventory, very high end. And it, historically, if you go back 100 years, you'll see that San Francisco had a steady growth. It drops, drops less than other areas, recovers faster and continues growing. You can Google market is too high San Francisco and put 1970. And you're going to see the same reports you read today. There is no way the market can sustain. This is crazy. There are markets like this. And... And you can see the markets that have done well through the years will continue to do well. Like Miami will continue to do well. Some people say, no, 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 I'm going to go to Timbuktu, uh, no man's land, Wisconsin, and I'm going to invest. Good luck. It's going to take you 100 years to do what we can do in Miami in 10. And the, by the way, 10 is a, is a magic number because to be wealthy, it should take 10 years. Because if you're flipping and all this, you're paying taxes, you should know how to do it. Within 10 years, you should be set for life. And that shouldn't discourage you if you're 70, because people live to be 100 now. And real estate, you're not going to lift the real estate. You're using your mind and you're using your connection and your tongue. And if you don't talk too well, write the emails. All right. So, so that's why I chose San Francisco. Old San Juan, 
is because it's the oldest historic zone under US flag. So think about it. This is the oldest, there is one old San Juan in the world. Uh, you can take places like, like there is one downtown Orlando. There is one South Beach, Miami. There is one Las Olas Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale. Are, are you with me? You see what I'm leading with? So you can maybe overpay a little bit, but add value, bring the right tenant. And a few years later, everybody, in the beginning, they say, you're crazy. What are you doing? What are you doing? Two, three years later, everybody's saying, you're a genius. Oh my God, Anish, how did you figure that one? This is the one. Today, I look like a genius because the market is booming in old San Juan. You can Google this also. 2021, in the history of Puerto Rico, 2021 was the highest revenue for tourism in the history of the island. In the whole Caribbean, San Juan was number one. Puerto Rico was number one as destination. And old San Juan, I am running, after 18 years in that location, running 100% occupancy. I, I can't even fathom how on earth the cruises are at 40, 50% capacity and we're sold out. I have it, one building that I that I'm supposed to rent it. This lady came in, she's an art, uh, they have arts, they sell arts, which is like very creative stuff. They have 3D arts. You go in, you just take a picture of the art they have and you pay them. And she said, the concept is phenomenal and they want to do it. And I told her the building is dilapidated. She said, don't worry, I'll take it as is. I'll give you 3,500 a month. <laughs> that place is supposed to be a storage place. I make 35 That's how much demand there is. So I choose very carefully. And in certain markets, no matter what happens, you drop less, you come back more. So you survive in bad time, you prosper big time. As long as you keep your debt under control and you have a good vision for the long term, you're going to do well. You're going to do well. Yeah. And I know for you, like, I, uh, because we have uh, spoken to you about this, but you always have a good amount of reserves. So I like, I know you're not running at skin teeth. Or exactly. Like this. Uh, what kind of reserves in general? You know, I know it depends on the business and debt okay. service, but yeah. You know. So for the fund, for the fund, for every 20 million I have, I keep 1 million in reserve. That's usually the formula I use. Now, reserves help you in dark times and they help you for opportunities if you want to jump on something. And it makes you look very good for the lenders. And uh, the real estate fund, uh, and you're set up the same way as you know, the real estate fund, unlike other real estate funds where people are stuck for five, seven years, if somebody want to cash out, it's 12 months notice. They don't have to, it's like a CD. We're paying them six and 8% and you're getting 8% steady sitting home or you're an engineer somewhere and you're compounding your money. You want to cash out, you don't have to wait five years. We cash you out in less than 12 months. We cash out everybody within six months or less. So that cash reserve helps. And because we buy and sell properties in San Francisco, there's always extra cash. So we deploy some, keep some. And in Puerto Rico, it's the cash flow for the fund. So, so you really, you're looking for four things. Number one is the safety. What type of asset is it safe? Do I have a margin of safety? I'm buying it below market. I'm going to uh, increase the value. Number two is cash flow. Is the cash flow, it's your oxygen in the financial world. Number three is, do you have reserves? You must have cash reserves. And number four, do you have liquidity? Can you sell? Can you borrow against it? Can you get a credit line? And this is the formula. A deal comes, I say, is it safe? Will it provide cash flow or a big cash out? Do we have liquidity? And we still, we still have reserves doing it? Okay, good, we do it. That's is what it? helped me go. Uh, from 2009, we had the fund. 10, 11, market was down. We're doing great. We never missed the payout. Uh, COVID, we still did great. Is that why, like, I, I'm going to touch on that safety. Is that why you don't pick other countries? Yes. Like economies or because, you know, like my, you know, my wife, Eliana, you know, she's Colombian. So she's, you know, Colombia is booming. Yes. And, yes. you know, you could buy buildings for this. Is that one of the reasons, you yes. know, uh, when you saw the safety, you know? Yes. Had, you know, I'm half Egyptian, half French. My wife was Mexican. Um, uh, and the, my, um, you know, and I lived in North America, I lived in uh, Caribbean. I, I, I was in Europe for my education. I studied hotel and finance. So I've seen all around the world. And I can tell you there is no country like the United States because of certain rules of ownership. So if I buy that building and the deed is in my name here in the United States, nobody's going to come and say, get out of here. I own it. Unless it's a lawsuit. Well, guess what? In real estate, we have insurances and I have the best asset protection program. That's a whole other uh, presentation we can do on the asset protection. The best. 
Okay, we've been in it. We have hundreds of students that enrolled in that program. They get sued, the person wins and ends up paying taxes instead of actually hurting the student that lost the lawsuit. So we, we are incredible with that. So for rights of ownership and stability of government and the power of the governments that we, we have, it is phenomenal what we can accomplish here. Plus the fact that we have lending at less than 4% or even at 6%, whatever it's gonna be, just having the opportunity. I'm in Cancun, I go to the bank, I went to the bank, Santander Bank. And I said, if I buy a property here, I paid cash for the property that we, we live in as part of a hotel, right? I said, if I buy a property, can you give me a loan? No, we don't give loans. I said, how do you make money as a bank? Credit cards, how much do you charge? 21%. Is that fair for the Mexican consumer? Uh, you know, they used to pay the highest for cellular phone. So there's nothing like the US, I stay within the United States and US territories. Yeah, that's a good answer too. Mm -hmm. Ashley, do you have any other? I know I saw a list. No, Sorry, I, I'm no it's good. I answered everybody on my end. Sharif, you did a phenomenal job. Anish, if you don't have any follow-up questions, I think we're good. Yeah, if there's any more questions or concerns, um, you know, luckily we've had Sharif come by for a few years and, and you can see he's, he's an expert on many things. Um, so mm -hmm. we're always excited. And that's why when you come back in August in person, so that, uh, you know, if, if, I mean, if we, if we could keep him here for a couple more days, I would love to buy. Thank um, you. Thank you. I you know, love it. And, and, and the best thing is, you know, I, you know, I learned a lot of my negotiating, unfortunately for, or unfortunately for Sharif, meaning that's why I negotiated that price down. I gave him some Indian guilt also. <laughs> so that he said, okay, fine, I'll do this for you guys. So you just want to make sure you're taking advantage of this. Um, again, you know, you want to add more tools to your belt also. So that's why we, we are bringing a lot of different speakers that are experts at different things. Uh, maybe you're already good at single family wholesaling and rehabbing, and, and now you want to move to bigger markets, or maybe you have access to money, right? There's, yeah, especially here in South Florida, um, there's a lot of people that we see that have access to money, but they have no idea what they're doing. Um, the other thing that I always tell people too is, no one brags about how they lose money on deals, right? <laughs> so I think it's always important, you know, for every, you know, Sharif or real estate investor that does well, there's about three to five that are losing their butt. And so that's, you know, I mean, I'm constantly getting trained too. Uh, today, actually, it was kind of funny, or actually yesterday, one of the things that Sharif, I don't know if uh, Ashley told you was, I worked with the Miami Dolphins yesterday. Yeah. And, oh. and 30 Miami Dolphin football players, and some of these guys are multimillionaires. Uh, what I can tell you, they probably asked some of the best questions ever, took notes, and, and same thing. They said, hey, how do I get into the commercial end of it? How do I do short-term rentals? Mm -hmm. And they're thinking about their future while they're still making money. And it was, it was really, like, for me, it was kind of, you know, pretty moving to see. You, know, you always hear all these bad things about the young athletes and, you know, hey, this is what's happening. It was actually phenomenal to see these young men, you know, as young as 21, 22, and as old as, you know, mid thirties, you know, coming out there, educating themselves during the off season. So I thought it was pretty cool. Um, you know, I, I mean, if anything, what I, what I constantly talk about in the webinars, you know, if the pandemic has taught me anything, it's been a reset button Yes. You know, yes. on the things that you want to do. And that's part of the reason why I set up the fund was, you know, Sharif was busting my chops. If you haven't noticed, he's, you know, he's a man of action. Five, about five years ago, when I first met him, he's like, so, you know, it's very cute what you do your, with your little houses. When are you going to start playing with the big boy? So, you know, and then he just smiles and, you know, laughs and I, I go home saying, okay, fine. So we all have that same fear is what, is what I'm trying to get to. And you really need to be in action in your life. So I think that's just a really big time because, you know, it, it's tough to be as the football players. I told them the same thing. Look, I don't want to be on the sidelines watching the game. I want to be in the game too. So that's any last thoughts, uh, Sharif, that you have for our no, audience? I, I, the same energy, it, it builds up and I have a momentum. It, it's what happens on Saturdays and we go an hour and a half, two hours, an hour, whatever, it, all based on what's happening in the market at that time. And uh, it's very, very specific to the specific questions and people, it's very interactive. Ashley's always on and we don't finish the call until all the questions are answered. 
Wow, that's awesome. Yes. Great. So thank you, Sharif. I know thank you're on you. the West Coast running around, closing your big deal today. So and you're still thank making you. that on thank that you. portion. So we'll look forward to seeing you. Uh, Ashley, as usual, thanks for always helping out and answering all those questions for us too. And we'll see you guys soon. So we'll see you at our next uh, event. Actually, tomorrow we have a, a free event at 11. So good night, guys. And thank we'll you, see you, Anish. Thank you, Alexa. Thank you. Good night, guys. Thanks, for everybody that's joining, I can see you'll get a username and password in the next 20 minutes. It's all automated. And then the next call, like Sharif said, is on March 12th. And you'll get uh, an email to that private Zoom link on March 11th. And you can email questions into me. And I'll be here to walk through everything with you. I'll call all of you guys tomorrow morning. All right. Yep. Ashley, one last question. Yeah. Um, I know we usually do the, the special pricing for the day. Are you going to, I'm now I'm really putting you guys on the spot now. Um, if we need to, because I, I just got a message from someone like, Hey, I got to check with my, my spouse. Yeah. <laughs> I um, got you. Trust me. So I um, did put a message here. What time Anish do you think uh, tomorrow by 5 PM? Tomorrow by 5 PM. Put in the chat. Does that work for you guys? Um, especially the person that just messaged me. So their special will be good until tomorrow at 5 PM. Yep, Eastern uh, Standard. I just bought you guys 24 hours or maybe less, but about 18 hours. But <laughs> okay. um, it's, see, this is again like same thing I do with Sharif. So yeah, he does put him in the last minute, <laughs> get that last bit of negotiations in too. So, all right, guys, have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.